待してるよ二人の結婚結婚いや困るんだがお互い様でも約束は果たさなきゃ待てあの時とは状況は違うだろうせーのいてー Okay, okay, I heard you guys. Today, we're showcasing one of your favorite genres, Hen. Harem. The harem anime genre is one of the most popular anime genres, especially among young male fans. So, without wasting any time, I present to you the top 10 harem anime you should watch. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so you can stay updated whenever I upload a new video. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Coming in at number 10, we have Chaos Head. Okay, so there are a few things to look for in anything I watch. I want strong characters, a clever plot, and an intriguing plot. Chaos Head appears to be that type of show on the surface. It's based on an innovative Japanese visual novel and follows Takumi, a reclusive otaku who wishes to be alone to play online games and watch anime. One day, he receives pictures from the internet depicting a murder in an alley. Takumi is horrified the next day when he walks into an alley and sees the pictures again. But this time, <clears throat> drumroll please, the gruesome scene is reality. Ooh, scary. Okay, okay. So I'm personally not a big fan of Stein's Gate. Oh, uh, sorry. I mean, Chaos yeah, said. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate Chaos Head. I find,、um, fi I find it to be, how should I put it? An interesting attempt. Yeah, yeah, perfect. It it's a show that, while flawed, manages to create an interesting recipe. Despite some well executed twists and an intriguing concept based on neuroscience and philosophy, 12 episodes simply aren't enough to say everything it wanted to say. Coming in at number 9, we have 100. 100 begins as Kisaragi h e a d o boards the so called Little Garden, a city on a ship that houses slayers, the world's protectors who defeat evil savages. His arrival causes a stir when he demonstrates his uncanny variant ability, causing the show to begin from there. Ooh, this sounds exciting, doesn't it? Mysterious weapons, cool monsters, interesting characters. Um,、uh, wait, why does that sound familiar? Oh,、uh, yeah, our favorite, Infinite Stratos. Of course, since this is a harem, we quickly are introduced to the main candidates for the harem, as well as a few obvious side characters to muddy the waters. There are a lot of backstories, so it's not difficult to keep up. Furthermore, the cliffhangers never fail to keep you on your toes. Fans of harem anime should be quite pleased with this Infinite Stratos replica that rectifies almost all of IS's mistakes. Though the cast is likable, there are many characters who serve no real purpose other than to be eye candy, which is unnecessary in a harem show with a myriad of girls available for that purpose. As is the case with most modern harem anime, people who dislike fan service shouldn't bother watching. Coming in at number 8, we have A Bridge to the Starry Skies. The anime is about a man named Kazuma who moved to the countryside to give his younger brother a better life. After realizing they took the wrong bus, they wait for the one in the opposite direction. He goes into the forest to retrieve his brother's hat, which has been stolen by a monkey, and meets Yui, a cute, cheerful, and very airheaded girl who assists him in getting out of the forest. But, but here's a twist. As they are crossing a small river by jumping from rock to rock, what was meant to happen happened. Kazuma slips on the last rock, falls on Yui, and ta da! They kiss. Yay! Not impressed? That's okay. To be honest, neither was I. The entire first half was filled with trope after trope after trope with not a single ounce of originality. The rest of the show follows a similar pattern with few deviations from other harem plots. So, why do I like it? Well, I kind of. Don't know myself. Would I watch it again? Most likely not. 
but if you need a break from some of the more serious shows out there, I think it's worth a look. It was a good romance harem anime that I would recommend to anyone who enjoys the romance or harem genre. Coming in at number 7, we have Kanakun. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another etchy anime in the house! Let's start with the plot first. Now, you might ask, what? There's a story in an etchy comedy? Yes, there is. That too, a pretty decent one. Okay, okay, okay. So, Kanokun's story revolves around Koda, a young student who moves from the country to a city and thus transfers to a school where spirits coexist with normal humans. On his first day at this new school, Chizuru, a female student, asks him to meet her alone in the music room. When he arrives, she reveals to him that she's a fox goddess, and they become a couple from then on. Why, you ask? I don't know, man. Yes, girls, this anime is not for you. With that in mind, we'll proceed with our discussion. I mean, I must admit that by the end, I had warmed up to Kanakon. To be honest, the show never gave me a dull moment to wonder why I was watching it. To begin, this is a love it or hate it anime. Those who can stand the etchiness will enjoy it. Those who can't will find it annoying, if not repulsive. It's not particularly original, but it's still quite funny and entertaining for those who don't mind the excessive fan service. Coming in at number 6, we have the Ryoko's work is never done. Yaiki Kuzuri is a shogi prodigy who holds the record for being the youngest Ryo in history. Yaichi finds himself in a vicious circle after winning this title, which he can't seem to shake. I, a nine-year-old girl, arrives at Yaichi's house one day, asking to be his disciple. Astonished by Ai's talent and potential, Yaichi agrees to become her master. The Ryo's work is never done, despite its unfortunate veneer of lollicon fanservice, is a heartfelt and genuine story about determination and skill in the competitive world of shogi. For a sports series to really work, it needs to be able to get a non-fan excited. While Shogi serves as a backdrop and motivator for them, I believe that liking the characters is required to enjoy this anime. And this may be difficult for someone, given the cast diversity we have an abusive Tsundare, a lolly Himidare with Tsundare tendencies, a lolly with Yandere tendencies, Onisan, and some more lollies. I hope the FBI doesn't see all the clips of this anime on my computer and... Anyway, overall, if you enjoy good sports anime and don't mind skipping lolly stuff, this is a great anime to watch. Coming in at number 5, we have Seton Academy, Join the Pack. Seton Academy Joined the Pack follows the adventures of Jin Mazuma, a student who dislikes animals due to an incident that happened to him as a child, but is forced to attend a school where the majority of students are animals. Now, where have I heard that plot before? Wait, it's almost there. Uh, Chuck, I'll just leave it up to you guys to remind me. Now, now you might ask, honest, is it a good series? Well, it certainly isn't an awful one. The best way I can think to describe this show is by calling it a potential guilty pleasure. Still, it would be a lie if I said I didn't enjoy myself. Because the story focuses on comedy and character interactions, you'll notice a variety of fun and silly facial expressions paired with simple pattern backgrounds. In the end, this series was very well made. And while it wasn't perfect, I'd rate it as an above average anime series. If you want something simple to follow with a hint of romance, this is the anime for you. Coming in at number 4, we have Magician's Academy. Magician's Academy revolves around Takuto Hasegawa, who attends a magic academy that is not marked on any map. During a summoning spell exam, he accidentally creates a girl named Tanarote, who happens to hold enough magical power to destroy his country. But fortunately, Tanarote professes undying loyalty to her creator. Now, one thing that comes to my mind after watching this anime is that everyone's so goddamn thick. The jokes apart, this series has a little bit of everything. Mecha, supernatural combat, and cuteness. It is the perfect series for any self-proclaimed otaku. 
It's not brilliant or terrible, it's just entertaining. So place your brain in the garbage can and let the childish charm do its work. Okay, here's a fun one. Imagine taking the spirit of Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann, the exuberance of common no made guy, a dash of the comedy of Kamikama Karin, and combining it all in a version of Zero no Tsumikama mixed with more Harry Potter. Congratulations! This is the series! Coming in at number three, we have... Are you guys ready? <gasps> my mental choices are completely interfering with my school romantic comedy. Or you could say no come. Okay, so here's a question for you guys. What are you going to do? Do you A, sniff it, or B, eat it? Some of you say, I do neither. But Kanade Amakusa has no other choice. He's cursed with absolute choices, a condition that forces him to choose between two random options. I know it sounds strange, but trust me when I say it's a lot of fun. However, one fatal flaw in No Come's storytelling is its length. 24 episodes tends to be the standard length for an anime season. I've also seen 12 episodes work pretty well, but 10 is too short. Simply put, there wasn't enough time for a satisfying ending or a well-placed story. Nonetheless, I strongly recommend this series. It's a lot of fun with excellent animation and an insane title. Nothing was overdone, which I appreciate. If you don't mind fan service, cultured shots, and jiggle physics, if you know what I mean, I strongly recommend this anime. It's extremely funny, at the very least, you're guaranteed at least a few chuckles. Coming in at number two, we have How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. When Kazuya Soma is unexpectedly transported to another world, he realizes the people are expecting him to be a hero. But Soma's definition of heroism is more straightforward than most. He wants to rebuild the flagging economy of the new land he's found himself in. Betrothed to the princess and abruptly planted on the throne, this realist hero must gather talented people to help him get the country back on its feet. <clears throat> The plot of Genjutsu is simple, straightforward, yet exciting and wholesome, making it ideal for newcomers. This anime is similar to Ascendance of a Bookworm. He does paperwork instead of fighting. Boring? Yeah, it does sound like it, but the use of characters, however, is where the series shines. Overall, I believe Genjutsu Shugi Yusha no Okoku Saikenki is a prime example of an isekai anime done correctly. It has everything I look for in an anime. A wholesome plot, great romance, cute characters, excellent voice actors, decent animation, and amazing soundtracks. I would highly recommend this anime to everyone with no exception. Coming in at number one, we have Kako no Inazuke. Well, because saying it in English would get me banned. Nagi Umino is a second-year student at Meguru River Academy. Nagi has led a relatively normal life with his sister and ex-delinquent parents. However, his life becomes significantly more interesting when it's revealed that his parents aren't actually his parents, because he was switched from birth. Congratulations, you're adopted! Well, not exactly. Anyway, this is the anime's One Spice and its primary plot point. The animation is standard for this show, there's a lot of pastel colors, pinks and blues, and everything always remains on a warm color palette. It's cute to watch and there are some scenes that are quite funny. The plot is predictable, but that can serve as a comfort to a lot of people. A couple of... No, Kokaku Inuzuke isn't anything new, but it's quite enjoyable at the end of the day. That brings us to the end of our list today. If you liked the video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to our channel. In the end, you all stay happy, and I will see you in the next video. See ya. Jeanne!